Mark chapter 5. I want to tell you today that I declare after 25 going on to 26 years as your pastor, look at me right in the eyes as the apostle of all eight campuses. I declare this, our best days are not behind us. Our best days are in front of us. Hallelujah. We're in the middle of revival. We're seeing miracles and wonders and signs. Last Sunday night, we had a woman who came, or Friday night, uh, we had, I had called people up who needed a miracle, who had gotten a bad doctor's report, and it seemed desperate. I had a lady come forward. She had stage four cancer. She went back to the doctor that week, and the doctor said, I don't know, all your levels are normal. All the cancer is gone. They, they, the doctor said that the cancer is going to sleep. I don't believe it's going to sleep. Can you believe that it's dead? Come on. So many miracles. But these are unusual times, y'all. And I want to tell you something. If you're going to know the mind of God, you've got to get in the presence of God. This is why God's presence is such a priority here at Calvary. Now, I'm going to teach today about evangelism, and we're going to move forward to win the lost. If you're ready, shout, I'm ready. The backdrop of this message is Capernaum. I've been there many times. It's in Israel. It was the miracle city. Uh, the woman with the issue of blood was healed there. Jairus' daughter was raised there. The roof was broken through there. Jesus did so many miracles. He here healed Peter's mother-in-law there. But here's where I want to go, Matt. Mark 5, 21. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat on the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. Now, this miracle-working Jesus is in Capernaum. But tonight at 6 o'clock, He's going to be right here in revival service. Hallelujah. Behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. One translation said he bowed at the feet of Jesus. And he begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. My little girl is waiting for a miracle. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. Don't miss this. A 12-year-old daughter is sick, a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years. She had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, mm -mm -mm. Anybody glad you heard about Jesus? She came behind the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I may only touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately in himself, knowing that the power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told, her the whole, told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. While he was speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? And soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid. Only believe. Are there any believers in the room today? Yeah. I want you to catch this text. Jesus is ministering and Jairus comes says, I have a daughter who's in crisis. She's about to die. Jesus said, in essence, I'll come and I'll minister to her. He's on his way to next. And while he's on his way to next, a woman with an issue of blood interrupts him. On his way to next, he's interrupted by now. I want to teach for just a few minutes along these lines, standing between what's now and what's next. I feel the anointing. That's where every church in America is right now. We are standing between what's now and what's next. How many of you are hungry to see next touch with the power of God and you want something right now? <laughs> Woo. 
Father, we just pray that you would have your way. Use me to teach and preach your word. Make me a wise leader who hears from you. I glorify you in Jesus' name. If you know it's all Jesus, give him all the praise right now. Amen. You can be seated. Standing between what's now and what's next. Wise leaders understand this. Churches with a burden get this. All throughout the Bible, listen to me, y'all. It's about one generation making a deposit into the next generation. Abraham to Isaac. Isaac to Jacob. Moses to Joshua. Elisha to Elijah. Paul to Timothy. God was all about his power and his word being spread from one generation to the next. Let me tell you what I love about this revival. What I love about what God's been doing at Calvary and all of our campuses. God is merging and moving among the generations now. This revival is generational. We see young people and folks that are a little bit older. And I'm going to tell you something. In the kingdom of God, there is no generation gap. In the kingdom of God, honey, I want to tell you, it's about one generation and making a deposit in the next generation. And I'm so glad that revival is not just for the older folk or the younger folk or everybody in between, but revival is for everybody. How many of you are grateful that God is touching every generation in this outpouring that we're experiencing? What I've learned about this thing now as I've aged and continue to get older, it's about one generation making a deposit in the next. It's not about getting our way. It's not about having it like we want it. It's not about competition. It's about generations working together. It's about people coming together. It's about valuing each other and wanting to do it God's way. I would tell young people in the room and young leaders, you know, we need to honor the generation that has come before us because one generation has experience and wisdom and faith. They've seen God move and they've seen God turn things around. But you that are in the generation that has been in this thing a while, don't despise the generation that's coming up because they've got excitement and they've got zeal and they've got hunger. And I'm telling you, I want to be a part of a church that is nurturing all generations where we care about next and we care about now. Jesus is in Capernaum, and as I've said, I've been there many times, and I'm going again next year. I would love to have you go with me. It's going to be a mighty time. We'll take many people there. But Jesus finds himself in a situation where he is being followed by people who know what they've been saved from. They just can't tell you what they've been saved for. They can tell you what they've been delivered from, but they can't tell you what they've been delivered for. And I want to tell you, we are no bother to Satan. We are no threat to hell if we don't know why we've been saved, if we don't know what we've been saved for. And if you're taking notes, you ought to write this down. It's not enough to know what you've been saved from. You must know what you've been saved for. Satan is threatened when you understand your purpose. Satan is threatened when you understand that you've been saved not to barely exist, not to barely make it to heaven, not just to survive, but you've been saved to make a difference on planet earth. That's when you're dangerous. Does anybody want to be dangerous in this season? You understand your purpose and you have clarity about why you are here, watch this, and why this church is in this city at this time, then you're dangerous. I want you to look now into our story. I want you to open your spiritual eyes and see what's going on. Jairus comes to Jesus. One translation says he fell at his feet, but he comes to Jesus and Jairus 
is the ruler of the synagogue. We've been right there at that synagogue so many times. Jairus was a man who the rabbis came to see. Jairus is somebody. He's a man of influence. He's well known. He had understanding and probably had participated in the discussion and the debates going on among the scribes and the Pharisees concerning Jesus. And many of them wanted to destroy Jesus and destroy his ministry. I guess you could say that Jairus was in the good old boys club. He was connected. He was well known. He was somebody. But in the meantime, something was happening in his house. In the meantime, something was happening to his daughter. She got deathly ill. And in that moment, eh, everything changed. All of a sudden, he needed Jesus. You ever been there? Jesus was no longer a philosophical discussion. Jesus was no longer an opportunity for him to sit down with the good old boys and talk about who Jesus was and what Jesus was doing and all the reasons he didn't fit as the Messiah. All of the sudden things shifted. He needed Jesus. Have you ever been there? Come on, real folk. Have you ever had a time when you needed Jesus? How many of you can say, Apostle, I need him right now. If you need Jesus right now, open up your mouth and give him praise. Come on. Here Jairus is and he's in a crisis. All of the sudden, the men that he had been hanging out with didn't seem so great after all. They were inept. They were unqualified. They were unable. He knew he needed Jesus. And I'm sure in that moment he said, just get me to Jesus. Don't get me to a scribe. Don't get me to a Pharisee. Don't even get me to, to, to the high priest in Jerusalem. Get me to Jesus. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been so desperate? Have you ever had such an attack on your family? Have you ever been so struggling? Have you ever walked out and didn't know what you were going Going to do, and you said, Don't get me to an apostle, don't get me to a prophet, don't get me to a deacon, don't get me to an elder, get me to Jesus. Only Jesus will do. How many of you know there's some things only Jesus can take care of? There's some things only Jesus can heal. Then, mm, tell somebody in your neighborhood, just get me to Jesus. If you just came for Jesus today, somebody give him praise. Come on, I, I just came for Jesus. Oh, come on, an apostle can't heal my daughter. A prophet can't save my son. A deacon can't deliver my family. A, a, a teacher can't heal my body. But if you get me to the way maker, if you get me to the miracle worker, if you get me the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, Yahweh Rapha, God the healer. <sighs> Jarius is in a moment precious of crisis. He's in a moment where only Jesus will do. The Bible says something very powerful. One translation said he fell at the feet of Jesus. But an even better term would be that he bowed at the feet of Jesus. He bowed himself low at the feet of Jesus. Now, culturally, if you understand Jews, this was major because Jews are taught never to bow before humanity. They only bow mm, before deity. Jewish people only bow to a power greater than themselves. So something had clicked in Jairus' mind. Jairus said, this Jesus is more than a man. <laughs> this Jesus is more than just a, a, a priest or a rabbi. This Jesus is more than a man. So he bowed before him, and this really was culturally amazing because if you know about Jewish people. A while back when the leader of Israel met the leader of Japan, 
The leader of Japan bowed, but the leader of Israel respectfully put out his hand. So when Jarius bowed before the Lord, before everybody, he was acknowledging the deity of Christ. See, there are times, y'all, when you will go through things and you don't care what anybody says about your worship. You don't care what anybody says about your praise because you are so desperate to get to Jesus because you know only Jesus can take care of this. It becomes so powerful then when you define Jairus' name. Jairus' name precious means whom God enlightens. And now, finally, the leader of the synagogue is living out the meaning of his name. Jeremiah's, Jarius is standing, representing one generation. His daughter represents the next. But the trouble uh, that Jarius dealt with, the trouble caused him to see what other people missed. What the other rabbis couldn't see. What the other scribes and Pharisees couldn't see, trouble made him see what the other religious folk has missed. See, see, trouble changes your perspective. Can I find some real people at church today? Trouble makes you sensitive. The trouble, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what's happened to Calvary. The trouble of the last season has made the real church, has made us more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. It's made us desire the power of God. And see, let me tell you what's gonna happen. As the world gets more crazy, the real church is gonna get more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. But the fake church is gonna cave and, and not desire the move of God. But the more trouble that we see, the more the real church is going to rise up and say, we got we gotta have Jesus. We gotta have Jesus. We gotta have Jesus. The devil had any sense, he would have left us alone. Trouble makes you sensitive. I said, trouble makes you seeking. Trouble makes you worship. Where are the real folk at? Trouble makes you pray. Trouble, watch this, will bring you clarity. So here Jarius is, now he's got clarity. Now he don't care about his title. Now he doesn't care about what the religious folk think of him. He's in trouble. See, see, some of y'all see folk around here, they worshiping and praising and losing their minds and you think, man, they must be in victory. A lot of these people that are praising the hardest and shouting the loudest are experiencing the most trouble right now that they've experienced in their life. But they know that they can't fix it. God has to come. They need Jesus. Jesus doesn't show up in our, in our religion. Jesus doesn't show up in our good works. Jesus doesn't show up in our denominationalism. God walks in where there is a desperation of praise, where there's a hunger for his presence. Jarius is bowing before the Lord. He's one generation reaching out to God on behalf of another. Help me, Holy Ghost. Did you hear what I said? He's one generation reaching out to God on behalf of another. Jesus agrees to help his daughter. Aren't you glad that Jesus still says yes? <laughs> When you have trouble, aren't you glad that Jesus still says, yes. Now, Jairus is bowing down before the Lord, and I'm sure he's thinking, you're the one Isaiah talked about. You're the one Malachi prophesied about. Jesus agrees to help this girl, and he's on his way to next. He's going to help this 12-year-old girl on his way to next. 
And while he's on his way to next, he's interrupted by now. I feel like preaching. Uh, can I find a church that's hungry this morning? Are you hungry for the word, for the bread? He's on his way to next. He's interrupted by now. A woman with an issue of blood. Somebody on your row has issues. Look down your row and see if you can figure out who it is. Who's got issues on your row? You know what's funny is you think it's them and they know for sure it's you. Come on now. He's headed for next. He's stopped by now. But his intention is never to deny either. He's caught between now and next, but he never intends to deny either. See, here's what you've got to understand. The enemy wants you captured by your now, defeated by your now. He wants you enchained by your now, enslaved by your now. He wants you worried by your now. He wants you overcome by your now because he's not afraid of your now. He's afraid of your next. <laughs> He knows if you can ever shake off the bondage. He knows if you can ever shake off the fear. He knows if you can ever shake off the unproductivity. You will march into hell's kitchen and take back what the devil stole from us. Jesus seems to be caught, doesn't he? <laughs> but you can't catch Jesus. You can't confuse Jesus. See, here's what the enemy doesn't want you to know. You will never experience your next until you deal with your now. Even in this house today, even in this great church today, watching us by live stream of people, we are headed toward the next generation. We are an evangelistic church. We reach out to the lost. But even in this house, as we head toward the next generation and as we head for next, we got to minister to now. While Jesus is on his way to heal a 12-year-old 12, 12 dying girl, don't miss this. He encounters a woman with a 12-year issue of blood. He encounters now a woman whose womb is dead, a woman who is bleeding, a woman who, came, who is not giving birth, a woman who is unproductive. While he's headed to next, there's a little girl who's locked in a room. She's dying. She's messed up. And we've got now and next that we are dealing with as a church body. We have many in the church who are not producing. We have many of the church in America who have barren wombs. They just come to church and go through the motions, but they never see anything birth. Y'all help me. I'm going to preach whether you amen me or not. We've got the same people coming the same way on the same Sunday. We've got the same thing going on and people are sitting there and their wombs are barren and they're not producing and much of the church in America has a barren womb. They're not giving birth. They're not frustrated. The moment that the church in America gets pregnant, buddy, everything's going to change once the real church rises and gets pregnant with revival. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Much of the church, not this church in Jesus' name, we're not going to have it. Much of the church is not giving birth. They're frustrated. They're weak. They're struggling. They need a fresh touch. They're unable to heal the lost because they need healing themselves. And then you got next. The next generation is locked up in their rooms. Much of the next generation, if you look at it on a grand scale, depression is ravaging the next generation. Sexual confusion, y'all, is ravaging the next generation. 
The enemy is doing everything he can to rob young people and teenagers of their identity. They're in pain. They're cutting themselves. They're wounding themselves. They're enslaved to social media. They're they're watching pornography because it's on their phones and it's so easy. It's so easy for them to access and they're living lives that are pretend lives. There's so many of them not even living in a real world. They live in this fantasy world that they've developed on TikTok and social media. But there is something that's shifting in Gen Z in the mind. Hey, hey, I'll say there's something shifting. I said there is something shifting in Gen Z. I, you decree a thing and it will be established. I said there is something shifting in Gen Z. Twelve-year-old locked in a room. Twelve-year-old bound. Twelve-year-old needs hands laid on them. Oh, come on now. Woman with a twelve-year issue of blood. In biblical numerology, twelve is very powerful. The number twelve is the number of government, alignment, and realignment. Huh? Now and next had problems. And now and next have problems today. Can I find the church? How many of y'all know now and next both have problems? Now is 12 years old and she and, 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 and she's out of order. She's out of alignment because she has an issue of blood. And next is 12 year old and she's dying. So both of them, even though 12 is the number of government, they're they're both struggling. They're they're both in a situation and they're frustrated. They're both both dealing with issues and problems. And and in this room, there are young people who are unfulfilled. In this room, there are young adults who are unfulfilled. Not everybody, not every young person in this room is where they need to be with God. They are next. And then you've got now sitting in this room, even today, even in this revival life, atmosphere. There's some now sitting in this room and you're frustrated because you feel like your time is about up. You feel like the best is about is behind me, apostle. The best that I could ever do is behind me. But listen, I want to tell you no matter where you are, God's got a plan for you. And God wants to use you. I am declaring that for Jim Rayleigh, I've only just begun. Honey, I've done some mighty things for Jesus and I give him all the glory, but you ain't seen nothing yet. The very best that you're gonna see out of me is gonna come not by might or by power, but by the spirit of the living God. You may be here and you look back and say the best is behind me, but listen. God is a redeemer of time. Help me, Holy Ghost. The woman had struggled for 12 years. She felt barren. She felt tired. She felt drained. Can I talk to real people? Now, I saw posts in in, in times gone by. Yeah, that church, all they got is skinny jeans and big screens and fog machines. That's all they got there. Listen. These jeans ain't especially skinny. Come on now. Some of y'all say, well, no, they're not. We, I think we got a fog machine somewhere, and we got a big screen. But I'm telling you, take the big screen. Take the fog machine. I'm okay without it because I don't depend on skinny jeans, big screens, or fog machines. I depend on the presence and power of God. about any of that. I'm not going to waste my time posting that. I'm not going to waste my time answering somebody who says that on my feed. I have nothing to say to you. Come on, somebody. You know why? Because I'm not worried about that. I'm in the business of healing barren wounds. I'm in the business of now and next. Well, Apostle, you got now in front of you Why don't you sing my song? (laughs) Oh, where are the real people at? 
Apostle, I get tired of standing up in here. I wish you'd just take the chairs out. We never get to sit in them anyway. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Apostle, why do you do that? Let me tell you why. Anything I can do, I will not, I will never sell out on the power and presence and word of God. But anything I can do that will make us more available, more accessible, anything that I can do that would bring a young person in, baby, I'm not ashamed to do it. I'm not going to compromise the word. I'm not going to compromise the B-I-B-L-E. But let it be known that I, listen, if somebody told me you can win 100,000 people to Jesus, all you got to do is hang big screens all over the top of this building. Baby, you would come in next Sunday and there would be big screens all over the top of this building because I'm called to win people to Jesus. Well, Pastor, that's just too radical. Tell Jesus about radical. Blind man? <laughs> oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Blind man? <laughs> Let me tell you something. If I told my staff, go get that potted plant, Somebody came up blind, and I went. <laughs> Some of y'all would say, Apostles lost his mind. Get your verse, Ethel, and let's get out of here. I'm telling you, stop trying to think. It has to be just like you want it. Baby, let's heal barren wounds. Let's reach next. Jesus stands in front of now while next is waiting. Here we are today. Now, some of you are here and you're tired of struggling. That woman's there, she's tired of being sick, tired of bleeding. And I wanna say this to anybody who's watching. Many of us in the now generation have grown tired of seeing the next generation die. We've grown tired of seeing the next generation not get an adequate witness of God and his power. And I'm telling you that what I see in this revival is divine order. I said, I see divine order. I see a divine order. I'm ready for a divine order in 2023. If you're ready for divine order in 2023, open up your mouth and give God a praise. I want divine order. Things were out of order. But when Jesus came, it was put in divine order. So here's what you have to ask yourself. What is out of order in my life? What is out of order in my ministry? Old apostle, I want a financial breakthrough, but you don't want to give to God. Oh, you ain't shouting now. I want God's blessings, but you don't want to give. Don't want to tithe. You don't want to give to God. You want God's favor financially, but you don't want to sow. You don't want to give. Well, apostle, I want power, but you don't want to pray. Oh, it's quiet in here now. Apostle, I want to lay hands on the sick, but you don't want to pray. I want wisdom, Pastor Apostle, but you don't read your Bible. Old Apostle, I want to go to heaven, but you reject biblical truth that doesn't fit in with your social gospel. You won't talk. Oh, God, y'all ain't saying nothing now. I believe heaven is for me, but you want to live like hell on the way there. I'm, I'm going too far. Some of y'all traded a holy call for a booty call. Come on, somebody. You, you, you can't bind the devil on Sunday and sleep with him on Friday. Come on, somebody. You want to go to heaven, but you won't want to live the gospel. I 
I love you. Love y'all. But you're out of order. And these preachers that are preaching, you can do whatever you want. You're out of order. You can live contrary to the word. You're out of order. But revival is being poured out and God is getting the church in order. Here's the deal. Everybody wants to be next, but who's going to pay the price for now? We've been saying this for years, hadn't we, in the church? God's about to. Oh, apostle. God's about to, he's about to do this. Apostle, get ready. When God does, you just wait. And we got all kind of faith for tomorrow. But what I'm beginning to see arise in this revival afresh is now faith. Like I'm seeing miracles now. I'm seeing healing now. I'm seeing breakthrough now. I dare somebody who's ready to get in the present tense of God. Some of y'all are where he was. Some of y'all are living where he will be. Is there anybody that wants to get in the present tense of God? If you want to, open up your mouth and give him praise right now. Look at somebody and next to you and just holler at them real quick and say, hey there. Say, you can just sit there if you need to, but I gotta give God praise for what he's doing right now. Right now in my life. Right now in my church. Right now in my family. Now faith. Somebody say now faith. Huh. It's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. How can you not see it and it be evidence? How, how can you not hold it and it be substance? You say, where is the evidence? Long before we ever had this building, long before we ever had these campuses, I had faith for it. When we couldn't keep the lights on, I had faith for it. When we couldn't pay the water bill, I had faith for it. And you said, Apostle, where was the evidence? The evidence was that I had that kind of crazy faith when we didn't have a pot or a window, when we didn't have any money, any resources, or any people, but my faith. My, my evidence was that it was in my heart and buddy that became tangible and now you're sitting in it. Some of y'all say, well, hey, listen, I don't have any evidence that my children to get saved. I don't have any evidence in my family or my financial situation will turn around. Do you have faith? Faith is the evidence that you would believe against all laws. I dare somebody that's got a little faith Open up your mouth and give God a praise right now. God wants to put something fresh in your life. I want to get some faith in my now and not just in my future. Hmm? You can't get to your next if you don't fix your now. Get in faith around the Jesus of your now, the God of your now. Even if you like the woman with the issue of blood, said this before, and you feel messed up from the chest up, beat up from the feet up, toe up from the, y'all know, floor up. Jesus came by this woman on his way to next, and the woman is on her knees crawling. And she said, if I may only touch his clothes, <laughs> I shall be made well. She said, if I can just touch his clothes. See, the now generation has to have faith to reach out and touch him. 
The next generation needs to be touched because they're dead. They're unable to walk to him. But those that are in the room need to reach out and touch him. And right now, I'm here to tell you, church by the numbers ain't going to cut it. Church as usual ain't going to cut it. I threw away the service order several months ago and I've not picked it back up because I said, God, whatever you're doing in this season, we're going to be in the middle of it. Now, the woman said, watch this. If I can just touch his clothes. Y'all, are y'all ready for this? She said, if I can't touch him, if I can touch what's been touching him. If I can't touch him, if I can touch what's been touching him, I believe I'll get healed. I believe I'll get changed. Now I want you to think about next. They can't touch him. They're not in position. They're not able. They're locked in their rooms. They're at Emory Riddle. They didn't come to church today. They're at BCU. They can't touch him. They're not in position. They're not able. But if you come in here today and you can touch Jesus, where are y'all at? If you can touch Jesus, I said if you can touch Jesus, if you'll just touch Jesus, if they touch you and you've touched Jesus, they can be set free. If you can mess around and touch Jesus today, when you walk out of here, you can lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. You can lay hands and the demons will come out. You can lay hands, oh, come on. I dare somebody who came to touch him, open up your mouth. If I can only touch what's been touching him, you can impact people when you have touched Jesus and they can be changed by touching you. Somebody give God praise that you're going to touch Jesus. Oh, come on. I want to hear from the people who want it just like that. Did you come to touch Jesus? Give God a praise if you did. She had faith to reach out, but next didn't. Next needed a word. Next needed hands laid on them. Next needed to be visited, connected with. Next needed a touch. We sit in the room and say, heal us, anoint us, empower us. Why? Because next is dying. We have to have faith to fix our now in order to get to our next. We need a now touch. We need now to touch next. That's why I need you to get a touch from heaven, we need now to touch next. And we need each other. I think about my life. You heard me talk about Sister Russell, who, an African-American woman who called me a preacher when I wasn't one, when I was lost and doing my own thing. She was in her now. <laughs> but every time she saw me, she called me next. I wish I could find some people. She saw something in me I didn't even see in myself. And she would look at me and I was a 20-year-old backslidden self and she would say, you're gonna preach the gospel. God's gonna use you in a mighty way. I was next, she was now. That was 39 years ago and now she's walking the streets of gold and now, my, her, her, come on now. My next has become her now because I'm standing in what she spoke over me. I, I want you to speak to your next until your next becomes your now. I want to tell you, call your children saved until they're saved. Call your harvest in until it comes. Call your breakthrough until you're broke through. You cannot give up now. Shake everybody up next to you. Make sure they're awake. 
Romans 4, 17, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who believe. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Call those things that do not exist as though they did. When should I speak to my next apostle? Speak to your next now. I dare somebody speak to your next right now. Uh. Speak to that lost daughter right now. Speak to that promise right now. Speak to that issue right now. My, 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 Jesus stood between now and next, the woman with an issue of blood and a 12-year-old girl, never going to deny either one. And if we're going to walk in what God has for us, here's what we're going to have to do. Watch this now. We're going to have to honor those who have gone before us. My God, we need to honor those that have gone before us. We need to honor the Billy Grahams and the Martin Luther Kings and the Youngie Chos. Come on, somebody. We need to honor those who paid a price so we can be here today. Those who have sown in tears so you and I can reap in joy. I honor my father and my grandfather and my great-grandfather. And I stand before today, you today not acting like I'm smarter. Or I do it better. Or they were clueless. But I'm just grateful for the price that was paid before I got here. I dare somebody to give God praise for the price that was paid before you even got here. Jesus knew he had to heal now to raise up next. You're part of the now generation, you can be used. If you have breath today, you can be used. You need to be spreading hope. You have something to add now that the next generation needs. They need to learn how to reach out and touch him. Anybody ever reached out and touched him like the woman with the issue of blood? If you've ever reached out and touched him, give him praise right now, if you've ever. If Now watch this, Acts 16, Paul and Silas are in the inner prison. They're not just in prison, they're in the stankiest, dirtiest, nastiest part of the prison. And they've been beaten half to death. And it's getting close to midnight, midnight, 12, a.m. It's the only part of the day that stands between what was, come on now, and what shall be. It's midnight for somebody here. You're standing between what was, what is, and what shall be. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I feel like it's about midnight. Yeah, I feel like it's about midnight. <laughs> Yeah, it's been 11.59 and it's not yet 12.01, but I'm standing here at about midnight. I'm not where I was, I'm where I am, but I'm not here to stay. I'm going to what will be. God ain't through yet. 11.59 represents the past. 12.01 represents the future. 11.59 represents yesterday. Come on, somebody. 1201 represents today. And there's a mediator called midnight. <laughs> the midnight that stands between the two. And midnight is where the shift takes place. Yeah, y'all, I'm about to run all over this church. I feel that Pentecostal thing getting on me. I know some of y'all never seen me act out before, but I feel like I'm about to act out in this house because I feel like I'm in the place where the shift is about to happen. I'm in a moment in my life where the shift is about to happen. 
I'm in a place where something is about to shift. I tell you, and tell everybody in your neighborhood, it's about to shift. It's about to shift. My family's about to shift. My problems about to shift. My issues are about to shift. Now, hallelujah. Holler everybody and say it's midnight. It's about to shift. If you believe it, give God praise. I need to tell some mother it's about to shift. I need to tell some father it's about to shift. I need to tell somebody it's about to shift. I need to tell some wife it's about to shift. I'm trying, I said, I'm trying to shut, I'm trying to shut down, but I can't do it. We can't afford to raise up a generation, y'all, that only knows lights and sound and music and coolness and creativity, but knows nothing about the power of God. It's about to shift. Judges 2.10 2, said, when all that generation had gathered with their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. But I come to ring hell's bells and let every demon in hell know that at Calvary, the next generation shall know the power of the living God. Now, Paul and Silas are in there now. <laughs> Listen, John, they're in there now, but they start singing toward their next. God, they start praising toward their next. Do you think they were praising God over chains and shackles? They were praising God because the story ain't over. I need somebody that would praise God because the story ain't over. I said, I need somebody that would praise the Lord right now because the story is not over. So watch this. Come up here, John. Come up here, Josh. Mm -hmm. Come up here, Landon. Come up here. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Herschel, you both y'all come. I ain't scared of either one of y'all. <laughs> okay. So watch this. Paul and Silas, give me one more. You don't have to be the devil. I ain't going to beat you up this time. Come on, Pastor Christian. I hit you so hard. When you wake up, your clothes will be in style. Come on, somebody. I'm kidding. So here they are in prison. Mm -hmm. You got Paul and Silas in prison. And all these people are in prison with them. <laughs> and they all bound up, chained together. Have you ever been in a place where everybody's bound up? Y'all ain't saying a word to me. You ever been in a church and it's like the whole house, <laughs> especially the pastor? Come on, somebody. So it's 11.59. Silence, Paul. See, I'm letting you be Paul. Silas said, Paul, what you want to do? Paul said, why don't we sing a little worship? Paul would we sing a little praise. <laughs> Silas probably said, hey, you know what Silas means? His name means Woody. Come on. <laughs> Woody looked over at Paul. <laughs> praise and worship. We just been beaten half to death. 
We in the inner, inner prison. Everybody on this row stinks. <laughs> and you want to worship? Paul said, come on, let's praise him. So Silas starts to praise him. Praise him now. No, I mean, yeah, that, oh yeah, there you go. Hey, hey come on. Silas is praising him. Now, now here's what happened. Something happened while they were praising the Lord. While they were praising, that they're in the now. All this is next. I wish I could find a church. They're praising in the now. All this is in the next. They're glorifying God in the now. But next is bound up. They're going crying God in the now and things ain't perfect. But next is still jacked up. So while, while Silas starts jumping and praising God, hallelujah, 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 suddenly gets on Paul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And they get set free, right? Just like this. And then all of a sudden it hits another man. And then boom, next gets free. And next gets free. And next gets free. And next gets free. And all of a sudden, the whole prison. Somebody stand up. Somebody. Hey. Now look at your neighbor and say, hey neighbor. Say, give me about two minutes. Because I'm going crazy in my now. Until next gets delivered.
This is the shift. The shift is happening now. So all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so. With every breath. Here's what I gotta say about next. You ready? Next. Your goodness is running after. That's next. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. I believe. I believe. Somebody give the, let's have a little gratitude to the, for the Lord right now. Let's, let's thank him for his word. I said, let's thank him for his word today. I said, let's thank him for his word. Nobody ought to leave without a hope today. up your hands. He's getting you ready for your next right now. <laughs> yeah, something about your worship in the now is unlocking the next. If you're here today and 
and you'd say, Apostle, I've got things in my now that are hindering my next because I've got sin in my life with heads bowed and eyes closed. If you're not where you need to be with Jesus, then you need to get it fixed now. When I count to three, raise up your hands and pray for me, Apostle. One. If you're going to pray, Apostle, pray for me because I want my next to be better than my now. I want the sin out of my life, too. I'm not where I need to be, Apostle. Pray for me. Three. Slip up your hands right now. Pray for me, Apostle. I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to lend you five more seconds. Hands are being raised across the room. You need to raise it, and, and you, you know that you're not where you need to be with God. Here's five more seconds. Four, three, two. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Two, one. If you raise your hand, keep it up. Now, if you're ready for a change in your life and you want to do more than raise your hand, you want to give your heart to the Lord, there's something about a public confession you raised your hand and you're ready for real change come right here to the front I want to pray with you make a step of faith if somebody next to you raised their hand and they're a little bit afraid to come you get them that's it son that's it begin to move right now come on come on look at this look at the young people coming look at the yeah come on come on bring them right here to the front here we go things are changing Salvation is in the room. They're giving their hearts to Jesus. And it's happening right now. They're getting ready for next. <laughs> and it's happening right now. They're getting ready for next. Somebody give praise for what's happening right now. God's getting them back. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll give you a few more seconds. I'm going to sing this song through one more time. And I'm, I'm, I'm just going to sing it. Because all my life, you have been faithful. If you want to come, come right now. That's it. That's it. All my life, you have been so that's it. That's it. Come on. With every breath, with every breath that I am made, oh, I will sing of the good man. Somebody give these all a God bless you right here. Everybody in the room, take your hand and put it on your heart right now. This right here. Now, I want everybody in the audience, don't rush out. Thank you for being so sweet, not leaving while people were coming forward. I appreciate you so much for honoring what God is doing. How many of you know we have to be in order, right? So hand on your heart. Let me just tell you, everybody that's listening before I pray with these precious people. We are focusing our hearts now toward evangelism. We're going to be giving you tools in the coming days that's going to help you be a witness. And we're going to be actually giving you kits, care kits that we're going to give to you that you'll be able to invite people for Resurrection Sunday. And we're going to have the greatest crowds that we've ever had on Easter Sunday. We're going to have a week of random acts of kindness. And then we're going to come together in drove on that Saturday. And I want you to come and help Apostle because he's going to be there. And we're going to love this community. And they're going to be invited to church. And we're going to bring next in. Right? So hand on your heart. Everybody pray this after me. Raise your other hand. Will you do that? Oh, man, I just love you guys. I just believe in every one of you that's come forward. I believe in your destiny, honey, and your future. I believe in the plan of God for your life. I do, sir, with all my heart. I believe in it. Pray this prayer after me loud and strong. Pray, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, take my heart and wash it clean. I right now want to prepare for my next. Make me what you want me to be. 
I've been trying it my way. I've been trying to figure it out. But it's not working. So I give my life to you. And Jesus, I ask for you to take me now and bring me into what's next. You're my Savior. You're my Lord. And you're my Redeemer. I give it all to you. Now all my altar workers reach out and touch these that have prayed. Everybody else, lift your hands toward them. Now tonight is going to be a night of miracles. Look at me, precious. Apostle is going to be here tonight. And I'm telling you that miracles, signs, and wonders are going to take place, not because Apostle's here, but because Jesus is here. If you haven't come to a Sunday night, I know it's a lot to come back, but man, when God is moving, you ought to get in it. We've had unbelievable crowds. I would love for you to come back tonight at 6 o'clock. I'd love to see your face. God will do miracles for you. Can I pray over you? I sure do love you. I said I sure do love you. I sure do believe in all God's doing in your life. I want to thank you for being salt and light this week. And I want to bless you. Hold your hands up, precious. If you're visiting with me, I'm going to go back to the back and I want to shake your hand. You by live stream, if you gave your heart to Jesus, just tap saved in the comment section. All right, I'm going to pray over you right now. You ready? Father, I bless everybody in this room. Lord, I release your blessings as a father in the Lord who's been at this now for almost four decades. I bless these precious people. And I pray, Holy Ghost, that you would go before them into their next as they have blessed you in their now. I pray that this would be a week of supernatural breakthrough. I pray, God, that you would make people's load lighter. God, that you would make their joy complete. That you would manifest hope and that you would do miracles. I thank you, Lord, that this is a week of power, provision, and protection. I bless them and I bless those by live stream in Jesus' name. Listen, I hope I can see you tonight at 6 o'clock. Do you love the Lord? Give him the praise. God bless you, Calvary. Amen. I'll see you in the back if you're our guest. All my life. All my life. Thanks for watching the message. I'm sure this spoke to you. Here's what I want you to do. Why don't you subscribe to this YouTube channel? That way, every time there's a new message, you'll get to hear it. Also, many of you have watched this. Some of you watch on a regular basis. Why not take time? And so, you can give at calvaryfl.com. You can give on your phones, and you can be a part of helping us take this message around the world, the message of hope, the message of Jesus Christ. Can't wait to see you back here real soon.